open your ears, and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm the Roman fan, Tim. Holy Christ. The Beast. The Beast. Holy Christ. She never ceases to amaze me and the boundaries that she can push with you well buckle up <laughs> so her and lover boy are dunzo right really oh they have been well for a little bit so she has this friend of hers that she's kind of banged occasionally off and on since she met him many years ago oh, yeah because i bang all my friends yeah <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, it's different when you're talking about having predominantly guy friends Anyways, so she and he had this kind of tryst going, and he'd hang out there all the time, and he was, oh, he's so fun, and he's so cool, and he's so laid back, you know? Like, one night he bought fucking a shit ton of ice cream for the kids. Okay. I don't know. what What's that food delivery service that you can... Schwann's. Call? No, not not the antiquated one that everybody would know. Oh. Uh, uh, I think it's Simon Uber Delivers. Eats or something? No, Simon Delivers. Yeah, no, it's Uber Eats is what he used. Never heard of it. It's Uber, but they bring you food. Okay. Terrific. Or Bite Squad. Okay. You ever heard of either of these? No. They fucking deliver food. He fucking bought like... Hey, wait a minute, is that the sign I saw like in front of oh, Applebee's Jesus when they Christ. said they would deliver? That's, that's fucking... Pro- maybe. I don't know. You're kind of getting hung up on an unimportant detail. I know, but uh, that's how Almost I $200 worth of Cold Stone Creamery treats is one thing he just did on a whim. What the fuck? I, I'm just... a. Have you asked yourself what he does for money? Like, you ever wondered why he's so free with it? Does he have a job? Allegedly. Like, he he flew to Missouri for 10 days. To pick up drugs. I don't know. Something. (laughs) She says he does robotics and crap, and I'm like, this is a guy that, didn't he, like, a year and a half ago, he ditched a car in the woods to escape the cops, and he only got arrested because they found him walking down the median... In his boxer shorts. You don't say. Which he stripped down and was walking down the median, so when he got arrested, he wouldn't get shot. Okay, well, I was going to go with anyone who's into robotics isn't going to be dumb enough to date her, but hearing this, um, yeah, I can I can see it. That's a match made in heaven. Yeah, so they've been having these fuck fests, and she'll be like, I'm so tired, I didn't sleep last night. And I'm oh, like, well, maybe if you put guy. the dick down and you'd fucking close your eyes for a bit... You know, so you're not gonna get any sympathy from me for being sloppy with your vag. Oh my god, I hope the guy she gets pregnant again. No, she won't. She got fixed. You know, you can still get pregnant after that. Yeah, no, she had her parts did, taken out pretty much. Oh, okay. Like she, they fixed her. I don't know. I think they singed her tubes. Yoga fire. Well, we don't want her having any more kids in, in reality, so that would be yeah. fixing her because the problem will no longer happen. So he skipped town to go to work, and one of my kids cried about it. Chi-Chi was all upset like he wasn't coming back or something. And then allegedly one time he went to New Zealand for work for like a day and a half. To pick up drugs. Yeah, I don't know how you would just take drugs on a plane like that. I don't fucking know. Well, he's the mule. He knows how. I guess. Uh, So here's the point. She said that she was kicking him out because he had been, like, crashing there a few nights in a row. This is new guy, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, that they were arguing. I'm, like, arguing about what? She's like, it doesn't matter. I don't want to talk about it. Well, the story was is that she let him borrow her van, and then he took it for, like, way longer than he was supposed to. Like, days? Like, hours. Okay, well, I let my wife borrow my truck, and I think anything more than a half hour is way longer than it needs to be. married. I don't care. She has road rage. Yeah. And she doesn't know how fast the truck's actually going because she's got a lead foot when she's in that damn thing. Oh, lovely. So anyways, they fought about that. And then the other day, I come to find out that he's not going to be coming around anymore. I'm not even sure I can be friends with him any longer. I'm like, what the fuck Well, yeah, happened? after you have sex with somebody, it's hard to maintain a... Uh, friendship. Because all you're thinking about is doing them. God, I wish it was that easy. It's far more complicated and seedy than that. She's alleging that she's missing money. <laughs> you, I, 
This is a girl I think has memory problems from all the drug abuse. So, I mean, alleged is a good word to use. And uh, if I'm taking her word for it on the situation, she mentioned that she was missing some cash. And then he immediately got super pissed and said, I can't believe you would accuse me of that shit. I would never steal from you. I know you have kids and all this crap. And then he got mad and packed his shit and left. I'm like, hang on. So you brought up that you were missing money and you didn't say, did you take my money? And she's like, no. He just instantly got super mad. I'm like, he's fucking gaslighting you, you stupid bitch. That sounds like he took your money. And he's immediately like, I can't believe you would accuse me. How fucking dare you? A smart liar would have been like, well, why don't we talk to the kids? Maybe one of them took it, searched their room. Well, if she didn't fucking deal in cash from work from her tips and then bring them home and stick them in a drawer for four to five days before she goes to the bank, she passes by multiple bank branches that she can deposit in an ATM after hours at every time she gets off of fucking work. Oh, let's count. Let's see. I know where she works and I know where she lives. So one, two... Two. There's two Wells Fargo's. Yeah, so so that, I was like, wow, that's pretty shitty. Because uh, she used her credit card to get some hockey tickets for Ivy. So that Ivy, when her best friend comes back into town to visit next month, can go to a wild game. And then Ivy gave her cash to pay her back. And now that cash is missing. So she's like, I, I don't know, I had like 400 some dollars and a bunch of it's missing. I'm like, are you sure you didn't fucking spend it? She's like, my mom and I fucking tore my dresser apart, pulled all the drawers out and looked, and we don't know where it is. So I'm like, wow, that's fucking shitty that that money's missing. But, I mean, you're fucking stupid. So, yeah. oh, 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 God, I didn't think he was the type. Then yesterday I find out the rabbit hole goes deeper. She says he stole her meds. I'm like, hold the fucking phone. What? So her her meds for her ADHD, which are the kind that you can sell to other people for a profit. You know, because she gets them for cheap. It's the controlled the controlled stuff substance uh, brand. Yeah, so to speak. Yeah. And so she tells me that she called the cops and filed the report, but she's got no proof. Nobody saw it, so they can't do anything. Other than that, there's now a police report that will forever reflect what a doofy bitch she can be sometimes with how, her judgment. How do you not take custody of your kids away from her? I get it. It's not that easy. <clears throat> it's dep- the government doesn't care until somebody's hurt. They don't. You're C- emotionally hurt. CP- <laughs> CPS doesn't give two fucks about that. Until one of my kids is in the hospital and I can prove it was due to her negligence, they don't give a shit. That's why so many people are frustrated with Child Protective Services. You know, like, call in all this shit and all these things you think are happening or things you see, and someone will come out to talk to you, and if they're like, no, I can't talk to them, so there's nobody third, we're going to go back to the office now and write a report and then, you know, not do anything, and then the kid ends up dead from getting beat to death by his parents. That happens all the fucking time. <laughs> and I wish that it ended with the medication being stolen. Did he steal valuable artwork from her home, too? No, she doesn't have any of that. <laughs> Unless you want to count that Hitler painting that Loverboy's brother made in prison and then gave to him as a gift. What about the dogs playing poker? No, she doesn't have one of those. That's oh. in my parents' garage, and it's a tapestry, not an actual <laughs> painting. I said artwork. I didn't say it was... Artwork is a general kind of term, but anyway. Yeah, so she tells me that the money in the kids' money jars was also missing. And I went... Are you fucking serious? Wow, sounds like she knows how to pick them. I'm like, where do you? Where's their money? She's like, in jars, in my kitchen cabinets. Where else would it be? I'm like, I don't know, in piggy banks in their fucking room? In a bank, maybe? So she's left him alone in her house before, and God knows what else is missing that she hasn't noticed yet. Oh, yeah. For all we know, he could have stolen some of my kids' Nintendo Switch games and pawned those, too. You dick! So here's the point of this episode. She begs me to not tell the kids because they'll be heartbroken because they liked him so much. Oh, I'd be sharing that shit right there. You're like, I'm not going to have you piece of shit idol. Hell no. Break those kids' hearts and let them know the truth. So I did the only reasonable thing and immediately called them into the kitchen and told them. They're like, what? So I said, well, so-and-so, your mom thinks, stole her money. And her meds, and also your money from your money jars is missing. And she thinks he stole that too. 
So I'm just telling you this so you'd learn that sometimes you trust people when you shouldn't and that your friends aren't always your friends. Like, oh. Nice life lesson. So they go back to their rooms and I think it's fine. Like the juice is fine for the most part. I hadn't struck her yet. (laughs) And then a little bit later, Chi Chi comes up and, you know, she's almost seven now. She's crying. She's like, I need to talk to you about something. Can we talk to you right now? So she wanted to talk to me alone. I'm like, oh, fuck me, really? No, please don't let it be one of those conversations. Yes, I know. Because so somebody's going to fucking die. Yeah. And then we come downstairs and she tells me that she's really sad that she's not going to get to see him anymore. I'm like, are you fucking serious? God, well, you got to build up the drama first. God damn it, dude. Gigi, not cool. Yeah, super not cool. And then I go to talk to the juice and tell her, you know, why her sister was upset. And then I ask her and she's like, well, you don't know that he did it. I'm like, well, your mom's pretty fucking sure. So either she's stupid and misplaced money, including your money and her meds, or he took it. And then she's like, well, what about lover boy? I'm like, holy Dang. shit, are you serious? <laughs> she's like, well, you don't know that he didn't do it. I'm like, I get that you're nine and that you aren't thinking clearly or reasonably right now, Mike, but he was in your life and helped raise you for like seven fucking years almost. I would never fathom in a million years as broke as shit as he is that he's going to fucking steal out of your money jar, let alone your mom's pills. If he heard you say that, I would think he'd be very hurt by that shit. Possibly. Well, he might just shake it off. But the, I the, think, no. uh, I, I would say that maybe he was a little angry and maybe took... A couple of those items. Not necessarily girls' money, but, you know, fuck the beast. I'm taking uh, He's not going to steal from her. He's not fucking stupid. Okay. I mean, you know him better than I do because I've never met him. Yeah. So let me just read you some text messages after I told the beast that I told <laughs> I the kids. Love, oh, God, I love this. I said a bunch of shit about how careless she is and she needs to get her fucking act together with who she decides to bring in her house. Because I dated a couple of chicks after we split up. And each time I introduced her, my kids, to these women, she hit the fucking ceiling. She's like, you're getting their hopes up and they're getting all emotionally attached to people. I'm like, I'm easing into it and telling them that they're, I'm dating these people. Wow. Not that they're going to be their new fucking mom, you hypocrite. So I'm like, and P.S., I told the kids. Because they deserve (laughs) to fucking know. You're not helping them at all by hiding that shit. They need to know the cruel reality of the world. And she responds with... P.S. You're a selfish piece of shit. You do not have their best interest at heart. From now on, I only speak to you if it involves our children or if it involves drop-off and pick-up. That is it. We are no longer friends. We never were. Don't do me any favors. (laughs) Yeah, I read that. I'm like, we are no longer friends. I'm like, we never were. Because I can't trust you either, obviously. We're supposed to make it so those kids don't hurt. Fuck you. I hope your wife leaves you and takes you for everything you got. You're not mature. You're mean and selfish and vindictive. I'm not sure how long it's going to take you to realize that our job is to protect those girls emotionally and physically, not just physically. You're doing a real bad job of it. I don't want to ever talk to you again unless I have to because you're just another one on my list that I can no longer trust. We'll just keep inviting strange men into the house, fucking the shit out of them, and let them steal our shit. Well, they're not. That's emotionally helping. They're not strange. This guy was not a strange man. She's known him for a long fucking time. Strange to the girls. And, uh, no, she, they have met him multiple times before in the past. So they knew him, but they hadn't hung around him so much. <clears throat> and he spent a lot of time with them the last month. So I still, I'm thinking to myself, this is really fucking hard to believe. And I had to ask her, has your brother been in your house recently? Because her brother has had problems with finally getting sober forever off of meth. I don't think he would steal from his nieces, but I don't eliminate any possibility because I worked with criminals. I know there's no honor among thieves. So who knows if he stole that shit or she said that he had a friend over and they stole that shit. And I don't know why they were in her room, but Ivy's watching Boo Boo Baby last week. And this guy, he's sitting in the room by himself sleeping. Then he leaves and comes back with a friend, and then they're in the beast's bedroom. And then they leave. 
Sounds to me like a theft just went on or a drug deal. I don't fucking know what the hell's going on, but it's like, Jesus Christ, my kids are living here and your main concern you. is don't tarnish their image of this guy that they were friends with. And now, final question here. If you were in a circumstance where somebody that you knew did something really shitty to you, like one of your friends stole from you, and your wife was like, don't tell the kids, it'll really disappoint them. Or say, like, your brother got in trouble for something stupid. You know, I'm just hypothetical. Like, your brother got caught with weed in his car and then went to jail. Would you hide that from the kids, or would you use that as a lesson to them? It's different, I know, because it's family. Yeah, I'm just trying to think here how we interact here. Um, the broader scope of this question is, do we owe it to our children to be honest with them on how fucked up the world is in the right incremental amounts to gradually bring them up to an adult level of understanding of what to watch for to prevent victimization? Or do you just allow them to put their heads in the sand and think, la, 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 everybody's nice, they're my friends? I think in the case of family, I would try to be as close to honest as possible, but not saying exact things like, well, this little uncle did this, and it wasn't really right, and I'm pretty sure he's really sorry or something like that. I, I guess I probably sugarcoat a little more with family, but if it was somebody like that I didn't give a flying fuck about, oh, you bet your ass I'd tell him. Well, that's easy. That's a slam dunk. But like if you had a cousin that got caught with a kitty porn dungeon. I wouldn't bring it up as a, they like, got caught with kitty porn. I would just talk to him about people telling them, you know, you know, it's like, hey, let's go into the basement and we'll, you know, we'll take our clothes off. Are you cautionary about that kind of shit? It's like, I mean, I don't care if it's friends, family, unless it's a doctor that mom and I took you to or mom and I ourselves, you don't do it. Just as an example. Yes. Yes, I agree. So, yeah, that's that's the latest chapter in the saga between the beast and I and her fucked up life. And it's just interesting that she, you know, puts all these cautions on me for stuff that she's doing herself and doesn't even take the time to consider the hypocrisy. So I had to throw it in her face. I'm like, boy, do I look like less of an asshole now because I dated a few women that I let meet our children? In her eyes, no. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it? That is at what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show. For the What Do We Call It podcast, I'm J-Man. And I'm the Ruin Fan Tim. And that's the end.